Hello everyone. In this video, you'll learn how to minimize checkout and clone time for GitHub monorepos. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Let's learn first what is monorepos. Monorepo is typically large repository in a version control repository that hold many, many different projects. So there are a lot of folders, a lot of files, a lot of larger files, so it's hard to clone. There are two techniques we can use. One is a partial clone. We should see different argument and command we can use to leverage that. So this will be applied at the clone time. And then we can also use sparse checkout. We can selectively choose which directories to clone. We need a sample repository large enough to clone. We use this Node.js public GitHub repository. You will find a lot of commits and then a lot of branches. So we'll try to clone by clicking code button and copy this URL. That's the URL we'll copy. We'll try to clone that Node.js repository. We'll, try, we'll type git clone and paste the URL. As you see, this can take a quite, quite long time, even with pretty good internet speed. I was trying this at my home, and it was taking quite a long time. Of course, once it's cloned, any time you want to pull changes, this can be pretty fast enough. But if you're interested in just the getting some files and modify only specific files, why would you want to clone the entire thing? That may be necessary for some cases, but you in some cases you might need that those you might need all those files at all. We'll try different approach this time. We'll type git clone and we'll pass some option. We'll pass filter and blob none and we'll also add no checkout. This argument, when you learn it, it will pull all the histories, commit history, but it will not pull all the files and content till you do the git checkout. So even though this can look like it's going to take quite some time, but as you see, this is definitely a faster operation than cloning the entire thing. So as you see, this will still try to clone the entire things, uh, entire history of it, commit history. But imagine that if you have a large, large files, so this can save a lot, a lot of time in this case. Because we have a uh, so many, so much commit history for this particular Node.js repository, but as you see, this it can be, uh, this is pretty fast operation compared to what we did earlier. So let's just wait a little bit and see. It's almost done. So we're there. Now we can try to see into that directory. And when you do do ls command, you can see there is only dot git folder. So when you do git log though, you can see the entire history, commit history. So all the commit history got cloned with this uh, command. VLAN second time. Now we are inside the directory. We we'll try to do the gills git checkout now. So this is where we are. We we'll try to check out the main branch. So as you can see, this shows all the branches. So all the branches are there as a remote reference. We we'll do git checkout main. This will try to pull the content, block content, in the main branches. So it can take a quite a long operation, especially for large repos. But we already got the common history, so at least that saves some time. So this really depending on depends on your inner inner speed and your uh, your computing power. For your for your machine, so almost done, almost there. So.
so now we can go inside here the directory and you can see the entire file now what if you want to just only selectively choose some directory um, we'll try to do that later for for now let's try to optimize where we are now we'll try to improve further where we are left of her left off from last time it's almost going to be saying comment or the similar option no check out but we'll pass one more option called called the debt and we'll say the value is one and we'll paste the url this will be super fast operation because it will just get a single commit history as specified from the debt the value of one so we do the checkout for the main in this case again it's going to be getting only one commit history but we'll try to get all the files still so if there are a lot of the files it can take quite some time but definitely going to be faster compared to last time So let's give a few more minutes and see. And then it seems to take a quite a long time. As you see, this is going to be definitely faster operation. And once you get things going, so almost there. It gets faster and faster as we see. Uh, so almost there. A lot of processing for sure. So it's done. Now we can go inside the directory. Uh, it's already we're under already inside the directory, but you can see this still clone the entire thing. But if you see the log history, you will see just one single history there. So now, what if we just want to clone specific directory, not the entire thing? For example, benchmark, and maybe some directory inside um, documentation. So let's try to do that in the next section. One command we'll use in this video is called this sparse checkout. It's still a beta feature, but you can use with really no problem. As you scroll down in this documentation below, you'll figure out, you'll see how you can use, use this command. You can use git bar checkout set and then selectively choose the directory you want to clone and if you forgot anything you can use edit command. Very last improvement you're gonna make will try to use sparse checkout. We'll do the same git clone command because we are starting from fresh and depth is one and then paste the URL. So super fast clone, but it, this time we'll try to add git sparse checkout. So the command looks like git sparse checkout and then in it and hyphen hyphen clone. This will you get from root directory. We'll do git sparse checkout set sct. So we'll specify the directories that we want to clone. This will still get the, all the files within the directory and root directory, but this will only selectively choose those directories. So now we can do git checkout main very fast. Now if you see the content there, you can see still get all the files within the directory itself, but it only chose two directory we specify. And if you go inside there, you will see you will see some still some files there, but at least you are able to see that um, it didn't count the entire thing, but only the selected directories. That's it. That's it. I hope you like watching this video and be sure to like it.